Hey everyone, GCAP is here. Hope you're all doing well and you've been enjoying my previous two videos I uploaded earlier to YouTube and I hope you have managed to learn something. Uh, as if you are following up, uh, we've been uh, discussing each one by one tool that you have in your toolbar on the left side and if you are joining new make sure you subscribe and uh, like um, our, my videos and uh, looking forward uh, for you to, to enjoy uh, what I have to offer. Uh, earlier we have completed the selection tool, marquee tool um, as well as a lasso tool and then uh, sorry, we started with move tool and selection tool was over here. Um, this session I'm going to um, discuss with you and give you a brief introduction about crop tool as well as the eye drop tool and also a uh, spot healing tool and the sub options it has and each one of them what does it do exactly. So let's start with crop tool, the very basic one. As you know, crop tool this is this particular tool over here, this particular sign. You could always press, uh, if let's say I am on a move tool, I could always pre press C on keyboard to go to crop tool. And I could crop it either by simply uh, dra holding the mouse key and dragging it anywhere I want to. That's one option. I could also uh, hold the shift key instead and crop it proportionally as you see it's moving proportionally it's not now if I leave the shift key on keyboard I could move it in any size uh, in regards with width and height as I want to but if I hold the shift key it turns into a, a precise proportion of width and height that it will ma maintain that uh, quality of your frame that you want uh, but again it depends on what you are doing in your work so uh, that's the basic uh, use of crop tool let's say if I proportion a crop at this size I need to either press enter or double click on with my left mouse button that's it and my photo is cropped as easy as that I could press the V key on keyboard or go to move to come out of crop uh, option over here I'm pressing the V key now so I'll go back by uh, edit uh, either from edit uh, step backward alt control uh, Z or I could yeah here so I go step backward one I, I go back one step so ne next I'll show you how the eyedrop tool works. Eyedropper tool, the shortcut is I. You could always press the I key. And you could take sample of colors, like uh, this particular color uh, green over here. If I press, you could see the color on my panel is changing over here. So it's very useful. You could always take, uh, let's say, any particular color that you like. Uh, you could take that sample and you could either take the code over here that's one option and you, you always uh, if you are working with illustrator and you want to use this color in U illustrator um, either you could take uh, the RGB version the RGB numbers over here or CMYK I pretty much use CMYK when I use illustrator and I believe many recent printing uh, shops that you go to uh, if you want to print something they prefer CMYK and let's say if you want to uh, print something very on a big bigger scale or anything uh, probably a brochure or a poster or anything make sure whenever you contact your printing shop and you ask them uh, which particular um, Print, uh, color panel, uh, color, uh, color option they use, whether it is CMYK or RGB, so that you 
um, you you set your artwork based on the based on the color that they are able to print it for you. So that's the eyedropper tool. I'll be talking more about eyedropper in later stages. There are sub menus as well in eyedropper. Um, I'm not pretty much familiar with many of the other tools, but uh, something like the ruler tool and all of this you could take the size and it's pretty neat and st uh, straightforward. By the way, um, let me step backward over here. There's there's a um, there's a ruler over here as you see. Uh, you could either control, if I'm not mistaken, R. That's the shortcut. Control R. You could take it away or control R again to bring it back. And it all it, most of the time it starts with zero. In Illustrator, you could always right click in this empty area, and you could select uh, the option will appear, and you could select which particular uh, method, me metric, or inch and feet, uh, inch or or millimeter, centimeter. You could use whether you want to use metric or um, the American style, the I don't know what do they call it, the the inches and all of that. While in Photoshop, uh, instead of right clicking here, which nothing happens, you could always double click on any part of the ruler, and this particular uh, page will appear. The preferences, uh, you could change it to millimeter, centimeters, or millimeters, whether it will be points, pixels. You could choose these options. And now it has been changed to centimeter, I believe. So as you see, this particular image is quite big. Uh, it, the width is 0 to 45 something centimeter, and the height is 0 to uh, 65 something centimeter. Uh, it's pretty neat image. Uh, I think the I, I, I downloaded this from Shutterstock. And uh, the resolution was so high, I think it was somewhere around uh, 40 or 45 MB. Um, now, let's move to uh, a spot healing tool. Um, the shortcut is J. Let's, well, this kit over here, this Patagonian kit uh, from Argentina, um, let's say I could always press the uh, space key, a space bar key, uh, I hold it and move with my mouse in re regardless of um, now I can't do it because I'm on 100% zoom. If I zoom in and if I want to uh, move the now, I'll show you one thing over here. Uh, now I'm not holding the space bar key, and if I hold my mouse key and the move tool is selected, you see I could move the uh, image uh, outside of the uh, panel that I have in the background and I could move it in regards to that but uh, if I zoom in uh, further and if I hold the uh, spacebar key I could always move the uh, within the image uh, without moving the image uh, regard regarding regardless regarding of its uh, background the panel in the background so as you see but now if I release the spacebar key and if I, if I move the mouse but, uh, mouse by holding you see I could move it from its background and that's um, that's one uh, trick you could use now I, if I want now I want to show you what's the benefit of a spot healing tool uh, very first option over here now imagine uh, some spots there are on on this Patagonian kids face that I want to remove like these marks over here I could always either uh, I have two options I could always take a sample from somewhere by holding the alt key and that, that target uh, symbol appears and the spot hitting bro that's uh, generally telling me so I could do this as you see um, the, the marks on his face are the spots that he has are getting disappeared nicely and very neatly and that's well that did that part didn't work let's say this part over here now I heard that 
the in the portraits of models that you have on magazines and they get published I heard that there are no single uh, portraits that get directly printed uh, from camera into the uh, on, co on the cover of magazines they all go through uh, Photoshop uh, they they change they they, they uh, heal they repair the spots on the face and I heard none of those photos are real and they all go through these processes so spot healing is one of the main uh, tool that they use alongside the clone tool over here which I'll explain it in uh, coming video uh, there's the patch tool over here you could always take a patch from somewhere by dragging an area and connecting them and then uh, you have an option over here subtract from selection and intersect with selection uh, there's there's one option over here and further main option is over here uh, if you're selecting the source that means if I now move this to this area uh, what happened so when I'm on source option over here I could uh, maintain the area that I selected over here that's my source and I could take this patch to this area and what happens it will imply the uh, some the, the wherever I release the patch it will imply that area into my source like it won't have that much effect but it's having a bit of darkening effect over here as you see now if I select the destination option I could uh, hold uh, hold the mouse and drag it to wherever I want to and it will take the um, the, the, uh, the specification of my source to the destination as you see over here so that's the difference as you saw I could take it to anywhere I want to and see that uh, black area of this area it's, it's taking it to other places as you see so now let me step back couple, backwards a couple of times so that's generally how you use the destination and source option now there's uh, another option over here which I told you there's the uh, subtract from selection and intersect with selection uh, I will be uh, giving a bit of more tutorial about these th those two options in the next video so these are the three two extra tools that uh, we discussed today in next video I'll talk to you about brush uh, brushes and my favorite clone stamp and the history brush not that much important and probably the razor too uh, so thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe and leave me uh, leave whatever your suggestion is in in the comment section below take care and bye bye